Okay, it is a recording. Okay. Welcome everyone to the South End Water Main monthly virtual meeting for November and December. If you tried to find one in November, we didn't have one. We skipped November. And this is going to be a combined presentation, a little bit longer, lots of fun pictures. So thank you for coming. Let's see here. If you did miss our October meeting or any meetings before that, feel free to visit the Charlotte Water YouTube site. All the virtual meetings have been posted there. And there's also a bunch of other videos there as well. So tons of good information and content on that location. And then also we post all of our virtual meetings specifically for this project at our charlotteswim.com website. So feel free to go back and, and catch up or just see where we've come from so far. We're a little bit over halfway done with this project. So there's a lot of stuff that you've missed if you're just not coming, uh, coming to us. But if you've been with us the whole time, then you can kind of go back and watch your progression if you want to, if you have some free time in the holidays. My name is Will. That's my email address and my phone number. And if you, need, if you have any questions, then feel free to reach out to me. If you have a sort of general question for the whole project team or you're looking to get a, a faster response and you haven't heard back from me, sometimes you can email this info at charlotteswim.com email address. And then lastly, if you're a business owner uh, affected by the product in, in the corridor, so to speak, we have a special um, inspector, Keith Hunter with Black and & Beach, and he is sort of our business liaison. So uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, if you're a business having some issues, uh, he's the best person to reach out to to get a, a fairly quick response. <clears throat> Sometimes we start meetings with a safety minute. Uh, I just wanted to sort of take a moment just to talk about uh, I guess traffic. I, I do live in the South Boulevard corridor, and so I'm frequently driving in and around this construction project and or walking in and around the construction project. I'm not sure if it's the holiday season in general or just increased stress from what's going on in the world, but it seems to be lots of crazy fast uh, drivers out there. And so I just want to try to have everyone take an extra deep breath. You know, the day is going forward and try to drive a little bit slower in the area. Uh, it, it's, it's a tricky project. It's a tricky corridor. And it seems like, uh, the drivers are getting angrier and angrier. So everyone just sort of, you know, maybe try and take a chance to calm down, uh, enjoy the holiday season and uh, drive a little bit slower. Today, we're going to talk about what, uh, we have planned for the next 30 to 90 days. We'll talk a little bit about traffic and a little bit about detours. <clears throat> the bulk of these presentations, if you've seen them before is me talking through pictures of construction and how you build a water line through a very, very busy roadway in the middle of the city. And then lastly, I'll put, um, I'll put our contact information back up. There'll be a brief moment for Q and A. You can put those in the Q and A uh, chat box. And then lastly, uh, this is gonna be a new feature that I'm hoping to do recurringly. Uh, there's gonna be a quiz. So if you pay attention to the presentation and you know the answers to the quiz, uh, you can feel free to reach out to me and I'll buy you a cup of coffee uh, and we can talk about water lines. So currently we are in phase seven. So we are in the remount ideal way intersection. It's, it's closed and we're going to be where we are currently from now until, you know, late February, uh, early, early March, if things don't go as smooth as we planned. At that point, we will move to phase eight. So the current northern end of the barrier wall will become the southern end of phase eight. And the northern end of the barrier wall will be up, you know, towards Iverson Way. And that will be sort of a, you know, two to three month time period again. So spring, summer time frame. And then of course we'll we'll be in phase nine and beyond after that. Our, our phases have, have been changing a little bit. We've been making adjustments here and there to, to better accommodate issues that we've come across. Uh, it's sort of the unique nature of this project is that we have a contractor and a consultant designer team on board together. Uh, to give us maximum flexibility to try and do whatever we can to to limit the impacts of this product and to make it go slightly smoother than a than a standard project. So that's where we currently are. Uh, we'll talk about just real quickly recap. So um, our last meeting in October, we talked about being done with phase six, and we have finished that phase. So we're we're now in phase seven. So you know, congratulations to all the people uh, in the southern phases of ours that we're done with and we're no longer in their way. 
um, and then welcome to the new people uh, who are now impacted by this new phase. We've finished the dairy branch sewer work that was predominantly in Poindexter. It came down South Boulevard, was in Poindexter, and then it went sort of back behind uh, in between Ideal Way and Poindexter. And we were just building the upper end of that, that portion of that sewer project. The rest of that sewer project will continue the construction, but not, not through our team. Uh, eventually that sewer goes all the way over to Freedom Park if you're just curious about where the wastewater goes on the west side of South Boulevard, it goes all the way to Freedom Park, and then it goes all the way down to the corner of Park and Tavola. Recently, we also got to the point where we are connecting in to a 24 inch line that exists. It's attached to the 64 inch water main that runs down Ideal Way and Remount Road. So, you know, 64 inches is almost as tall as I am in diameter, a fairly large water main. It's a pretty big success. I'm pretty excited that we. We've got to that 24 inch connection. Uh, we've made that connection and everything seems to be going well with that. Uh, we've pressure tested the stub outs there to make sure the existing valves do work. Um, and everything seems to be going smoothly in terms of connecting to that 64 inch water line. So now this water line basically runs between this giant 64 inch line and the, the, the fairly large 36 inch line as well that is down uh, running, running up Scaly Bark. So now the whole point of this product, right, is to connect these other larger transmission mains through this corridor, and, and that's what we've done, and it, it's, it's, it's going well. <clears throat> Lastly, I want to talk about an extra step we're doing to help locate uh, gas lines and other utilities that previously were not, not known to exist. Um, we've had some issues in past phases with that, and we, we have taken some steps to remedy that, so I'm going to highlight and talk about that a little bit. We generally talk about phasing a little bit on these meetings. So here's a here's just a map to talk a little bit about about the phase that we're currently in. Uh, again, pointing out that 64 inch line that runs down Ideal and Remount. We're in that intersection right now. We're kind of almost just where that square is, but a little bit north of there as well. Uh, and then you know next, of course, we will move up closer to Atherton Street um, for our next phases. Here's another look at sort of phases. Uh, Generally, generically speaking, we have we have been shifting things a little bit here and there, just depending on, as I said, what issues have come up during construction, and and how we sort of can better tie into existing infrastructure, and and keep traffic flowing, and keep all the roads open as much as possible. It's it's tricky. <clears throat> but I want to touch a little bit about traffic and detours and alternative routes. So this is what our traffic control plan looks like. Uh, I think. It may not always be obvious how much work and effort and energy has to go into doing a traffic control plan. So CDOT, so Charlotte Department of Transportation, requires us to create these drawings and have these plans. They're pretty detailed. And this is, you know, they've, they've given us the mandate that we, we can't close South Boulevard fully, right? So we need to have a, a full lane of travel both north and south. And we need to also maintain pedestrian crosswalks at all times, at all intersections. And then, of course, you know, safety, that the main thing is we have to do everything uh, in a manner that is that is industry standard for, for safety for, for cars and for the people inside of our construction site. So this sort of lays out, you know, where all the signs have to go, where the barrier wall can go, where all the cones can go. So, you know, we, we put all this out there. And then in addition, we, we typically have, you know, manned flaggers out there as well, also helping to guide traffic in and around stuff and then helping to manage traffic into and out of the construction site. I mean, there's just a whole lot going on. So I, I just wanted to sort of show this diagram to, to point out that there's a lot of energy and effort going into trying to figure out how to get all this traffic to work. I know it can be frustrating when you're just sitting in traffic and you're, and you're wondering what's going on and why, why you're sitting in traffic. But again, for the most part, it's, it's because of the complexity um, and, and everything that's possible to be, do, to be done to, to alleviate traffic concerns is being done. So, but to summarize, even make it more simple, what this diagram says is that for the most part, you can't make any left turns at this intersection. So there's no left turns off of Remount on South Boulevard. There's no left turns off of Ideal on the South Boulevard. And then, you know, northbound South Boulevard can't turn left on the Remount. Southbound South Boulevard can't turn left on the Ideal. So, no left turns pretty much anywhere uh, in this part of the construction. 
Now I'm going to jump into sort of the, you know, the how it's made part of the presentation. You know, for the most part, we're going to talk a little bit about the sewer work today, which is going to be. This is unfortunately or fortunately the last time I will talk about the sewer work because we have completed it. And then we'll talk about the water line. Um, a lot of talk about compaction and paving and backfilling uh, a couple pictures of. Pipe assembly work, and then, of course, a bunch of pictures of soft digs because. These presentations always have at least 2 pictures of soft digs. <clears throat> Here is what point nature drive looked like. Up until fairly recently, this was the last piece of the sewer that was getting put in before we put the sewer in South Boulevard. You can see that last manhole there. I've actually got some pictures of that manhole specifically being constructed, uh, which, I think, which I think is interesting. So, how does a manhole get built? Um, it's not just one big piece of concrete that's put in the ground. You can see this is a diagram that sort of shows how this one was constructed. And you can see there it sort of comes in five different pieces, and each piece is put in and, and it's stacked out, as they say. Piece at a piece at a time, uh, and it's sealed at each at each seam there, and eventually you end up with this sort of big, you know, cylinder down on the ground. Here, here's the last two pieces getting put into place. You can see they're putting some uh, sealant around the lip of that uh, second to last piece, and then on the right side picture there, you can see they're lowering it, lowering the the final top piece on that manhole. Um, and there's a metal. A metal uh, cover, and then a, a metal, I'm sorry, metal frame, and then a, a, a manhole lid will go on that top piece there, and then of course that will all get backfilled around and then paved over, and then all you see from the street, right, of course, you'll just see the manhole lid uh, from the street. This is what it looks like when you look down in that manhole. At the bottom there, there, there will be you know the the wastewater will be flowing uh, in that little bit of channel, and then some wastewater will come in. Uh, in that top pipe there as well, but you can kind of see the seams and you can see how they've been sealed to keep all the water inside. And then the, the last thing I want to point out in this specific manhole, and actually a lot of the manholes we've been putting in lately, we've been having a, an additive called Conblock that's added to the concrete as it's being cast. And that helps to prevent corrosion of the concrete inside the manhole. So. Wastewater, I guess it's, it's probably no surprise, has some microorganisms that live in it. And those microorganisms can sometimes um, put off like uh, hyd what's called hydrogen sulfide. It's an off gas pr product from when they, when they are reproducing and feeding. And as a result, we can get corrosion inside the main hole and the concrete can, can decay and, and come apart faster than usual. So we have this special additive called Comblock that gets added to the concrete for the main hole. And those manholes will now last a lot longer than they would typically otherwise because of uh, this special additive. Once the manhole is fully completed and finished, we go ahead and you know put a little lid on top there, and and use vacuum testing to determine you know how tight the manhole is. So so for the most part, these manholes are all airtight. They only have to be watertight, but they're tighter than that and. This is the way that it's, like it's verified that all the sealant was done correctly and everything was you know assembled the way it was supposed to. And at the end of the day, you have a, an extremely tight system that will keep all the wastewater in as it's supposed to until it gets down to the wastewater plant where we can clean that water, uh, which is you know what we do. We take dirty water and make it clean. Lastly, once all the manholes are constructed and, and put into place, we go ahead and backfill with, with this extra. With this dirt here, uh, we talked about it in the past. It's called select fill dirt. So it's not just the same dirt we took out of the, the trench in the beginning. This is actually specialized, uh, cleaner, stronger dirt, so to speak, and it can compact a little bit better. And we put that back in there before we reinstate, before we restore the roadway. So that way, the road will last a lot longer. This will provide a much stronger base surface for the new asphalt to go on, so that. Uh, Again, the road will last a lot longer in the future. This is part of the second to last step. You can see we went ahead and put in asphalt just in the areas that we had worked in. You can see it was saw cut, kind of very specific uh, lines there with the asphalt. But then, of course, uh, we go back and we mill the entire width of the roadway and then, and then repave that. So now you end up with a roadway that is completely smooth, um, relatively seamless, and, and should last for a long time. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see my pointer over here, but if you look out in the middle of that picture, 
you see the top of that manhole that we previously were looking at right there. That's what it looks like when it's all done. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to jump into South Boulevard a little bit and talk about the, the roadway surface there. So this is what it looks like. Uh, and apparently a long time ago, when South Boulevard was originally built, it, it had a cement surface and then multiple layers of asphalt had been put on top of South Boulevard over the many, many years. And so when we went back and we excavated and we're getting ready to restore the roadway, we had to figure out how to how to restore that roadway back to a condition that's that's as good or or better than it was. And what we discovered was there were a lot of clay soils down below that cement that were really not great for building a road on. And they were old and swampy. And and that part sort of makes sense. We were talking about it and I was wondering, you know, how it was possible that there'd be a swamp nearby because South Boulevard is kind of at the top of the ridge. But then again, you know, you look at Marsh Road, which is not too far from here, probably is named such because of Marsh being nearby. So we had to figure out how we were going to deal with those really unsuitable soils, but we you know, can't just keep digging until you get to something better. So you have to figure out a way to, to build on top and not great, but make it better and then you know improve the quality of the subsurface until you get to the top and then of course you pave over um, and if, you, if you've done everything right then you end up with a really nice strong road service that can last many many years and since south boulevard is so heavily used that was a sort, of course the goal so first thing we did was you know um add some layers of rock there and really compact those down really well you can see we're gonna have to we had to end up adding a whole bunch of material to get up to the, the top surface where South Boulevard was after we had excavated and installed stuff. So here's the first layer of rock. Then we came in and we use a geotextile material. So that's what this, you can kind of see the, the dark band there. That's where the, the, the fabric is overlapping. But essentially we put rock down. We put this fabric type material down to help sort of uh, get some added strength in the subsurface roadway. And then, you know, we have more rock. So this is something called ABC or aggregate base course. This is sort of the industry standard material that gets put down just before asphalt. It, you can compact it really well. You can see the roller compactor at the top there. You can compact it really well, make it really, really strong. And then that way you come back and you add your, you know, your last few inches of, of asphalt there. Um, you get a nice, strong, strong road surface. <clears throat> There you go, there's the asphalt. That's sort of the last piece. Uh, and of course they added the asphalt up until the existing roadway level, uh, make it nice and seamless, nice and smooth. Okay. All right, and then, you know, once you finish doing the asphalt, then you can move the barrier wall and move on to the next phase. So this is now a picture of the new phase and in the, in the right side of the picture, you see a guy there. He's doing what's called, uh, he's using what's called ground penetrating radar or GPR. So if you've been involved in this project for, you know, last few phases, I don't think, so. I don't think last phase, maybe, maybe phase four and phase five, we, we found some utilities that weren't previously located by the 811 people. And so we've, we've been partnered up with uh, Piedmont now to try to resolve this problem. They've got some old records that are sort of having to sort through that have become a little bit problematic. So we've figured out a way now, um, you know, in partnership with Piedmont Natural Gas to get this GPR consultant out there and they go ahead and they confirm all the locates we know are there, but also they're finding things that weren't located that we didn't know were there. And so we can then go and soft dig and verify what they think is there to prevent us from damaging anything during the actual construction process. So we did this, uh, I believe it was last week or week before and we found some new things, so that was really helpful. We plan to do this at the beginning of every single phase going forward to, to again, further help us not to damage anything as we're installing the water line. <clears throat> uh, I want to quickly say thank you to Zach. He start, he's really starting to get me some really great pictures about showing how these soft digs work. Uh, we're, we're at almost perfection level photography for these educational presentations. And so I'm especially excited when I saw these pictures. So again, we've talked about soft digs before, but essentially it's a two-man team of people that uh, one person has a 
a vacuum line that they're running, they're like vacuuming. And then one person has this big long metal rod that it's got, it's hollow on the inside and it has compressed air. So they kind of pick and, and break up the clumps of dirt. And then the guy, the vacuum can vacuum out those clumps of dirt. So uh, you end up with a, with a small, very specific hole. Um, typically you do it, you know, if you're trying to find a water line or you're trying to find a gas line or a, a fiber optic line, you, you slowly and, and softly dig down till you get to it. You don't damage it in the process. You know, the opposite is what's called a hard dig. And that's when you take a big excavator and remove a bunch of dirt and often you remove the gas line or whatever with it. So this is the alternative to that. Uh, and I, the contractors have been doing a really excellent job. Um, I don't think we've quite hit a hundred soft digs yet, but we're somewhere north of 50 soft digs that have been done to, to verify other utilities and to make sure that where we're gonna go excavate, um, we're not gonna be damaging anything. There's another great picture of that. So again, the guy in the guy in the back of the picture with the white hard hat, he's holding the vacuum line. And then the guy with the dark hard hat in the front, he is, you know, breaking up using compressed air and using his uh, giant metal toothpick. He's breaking up material that can be vacuumed out. And then your end result, of course, is this very specific, very concentrated hole you can see the utility they're looking for is in, the, is in the bottom there. It's orange. Uh, and then you can see also they have, they have found these cables in the process on the left side of the picture. And then they found this other uh, utility there on the right side of the picture as well. And they dug, you know, they dug around them in a way that didn't damage them. So they can be protected, uh, kept in service. That's all I'm gonna talk about soft digs for today, but you know, if you, if you wanna hear more, you can come back in a month and I'll be talking about it again. Probably, highly likely. Here's a picture of the, the pipe actually going on the ground. Uh, again, big 24 inch ductile iron pipe. Uh, a T connection right there in the middle. And that allows us to, to have a service connection off the side. That, that uh, orange reddish thing is a little small valve there. And at the beginning of the project, we actually were gonna, we were gonna tap these water lines, uh, but in, we decided to make a change just to make them a little bit more of a robust facility and installation. On the transmission line, we're putting in these T's instead to get these big services coming off the side there. So that's what it looks like. This all gets assembled up uh, at regular ground elevation and then lowered down in there with the excavators. And that's all I have for today. That was a lot of information, um, and it was fairly quick. But if there's any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat right now. I see uh, Megan. I see your question, and yeah, absolutely. We can share all this information with you and you know if you have any other groups of people that want to want to hear this kind of presentation or learn about this information i'm willing to come come and talk so i'm always willing to talk about how it gets built to people that want to learn listen and learn <clears throat> how big was the marshall marsh road yeah i'm not sure that's a great question i again i had forgotten that that even existed uh steve had to point out to me that it was called marsh road which you know i live right next day so i should have known but Marsh Road, for the most part, goes all the way over to Park Road and dead ends. So I presume that it, it may have been quite large. <clears throat> okay, I don't see any other questions. So I'm going to go on to the quiz here. So again, if you, oh, wait, one more question. Uh, when will water start flowing in the new pipes you are laying? So that's, that's an interesting question. We have been basically working from large valve to large valve. And so once we get to, the next large valve. So in this case, the newest large valve that we have gotten to is the is the one on the 64 inch water line right there. And if you actually were driving through the area last weekend, you would have seen the uh, the flushing in progress sign and, and seen the water coming out of our construction zone. So we actually were flowing water into the new line between Poindexter and Ideal Remount. Now that line's not in service. Um, the lines are in service and actually flowing water that people are using south of Poindexter. Uh, but right now it's just, uh, we're, we're flushing and I believe we did our, uh, our biological testing and chlorination either at the end of last week or the beginning of this week. So that, that line should be sort of close to being ready to be put in service, but we're, yeah, long story short, we're putting the line in service sort of a section at a time. From big valve to big valve. Everything south of Elmhurst is definitively in service. So anyone south of Elmhurst is definitely on the new line now. 
um, and not on the old line. The old line, of course, is still active and still working. Uh, we're ju we just slowly move the services over once the line is active and in service. Okay. Um, okay, on to the quiz. If you think you know the answers to these three quiz questions, then like I said, feel free to reach out to me. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. First question, what does ABC stand for? Second question, uh, when you're assembling a manhole, it's called blank. And then how big is the water main in remount and ideal? So again, here's some kind of information for us. Uh, we have the website, which is got all the most updated information on it. If you wanna you know, receive communication from us on a regular basis, especially about things like unexpected traffic problems, uh, you can join the mail list, so the text list of text South End Water to 31996 or email the email address. And then here's all of our contact information. So my name's Will, far left there. That's my phone and email. Feel free to reach out to me. If you want to reach the whole team, then you email info at charlotteswim.com. And if you're a business in the area um, and you're having issues or I mean, actually, Keith probably has already communicated with you. He's been doing a pretty good job reaching out to businesses before we get out front of your location. Um, but he's a good point for day to day stuff as well. That I'll take some extra deep breaths and, and say thank y'all. Y'all have a good weekend.